something. Okay, uh, a plumb bob hangs from a, the roof of a railroad car. The car runs a circular track of some radius at a speed. At what angle relative to vertical does the plumb bob hang? All right, let me uh, draw a picture of this to kind of, I want to verify for myself that I understand. And I think this might be one of those questions uh, for a faithful representation, you actually need two pictures. Um, because, so if I were drawing a, like a top-down view of that railroad car, then uh, this might be what it looks like. You have a railroad uh, that, uh, that has a circular track of radius R, and I have some car that's uh, making that track at some speed. Now, here's the problem with the, this particular view or the top view is that um, the plumb bob is hanging kind of downward. So whatever angle that's making, I, I don't see that from this view. So you really need a view from a different angle. Maybe uh, the railroad car is here and you're looking at it from back, having it go away from you. So you need the second view, rear view, to say, all right, this is the rail car and the car is moving in a way it's kind of going into the page and, or I guess, yeah, going into the page and then um, you have a plumb bob here. And this is where you have to be careful or kind of think through intuitively. Imagine you are sitting in a railroad car, it's making a left turn or left turn. As you are looking at it, is the plumb bob hanging off to the right or hanging off to the left? And when you think through it, I hope you kind of see that it should be hanging off to the right. And so, okay, so it's uh, this angle that it's referring to. Good. Okay, so it, it, it's worth drawing that picture, kind of making sure you have correct image of the, of the situation. So, all right, let's, uh, if all of that makes sense, let's uh, start out with the problem solving steps. Uh, so the free body diagram for this scenario is, uh, so I'm drawing free body diagram of the mass, uh, which again, I don't have, but I'm gonna hope it cancels out. <laughs> um, so I have a mass sitting here. Okay, I um, guess I need to draw the forces on it. So there should be, a, um, there should be gravity. I, there's always gravity. So let me start out with that, gravity, mg. Now, I do know that the bob is not accelerating downward, so there should be an upward force. And I kind of refer back to this to try to figure out, okay, what upward force is there? And I hope you realize staring at it that the only thing that's providing upward force there is the string. So the only other force I can draw, which will help make this uh, diagram come to some reasonable picture is this where I have the tension force drawn, and if you go through geometry, you'll see that that data is this data here. And um, there should be only two forces on the plumb bob, and the two forces are gravity and the tension force. And as you are kind of considering that, I hope it makes sense to you that there is no force that's pulling the plumb bob to the right centrifugal force does not exist. Instead, <laughs> what you should be making sense of is the fact that the plumb bob is accelerating to the left. There is an acceleration that is pointing towards the center of the circular track. So you have that this is centripetal acceleration and that actually matches with this uh, horizontal component of the tension force because that is what is going to provide the necessary centripetal force. So, all right, so that's a standard strategy, step number one. Step number two, we have to define coordinate axis. So, you know, this discussion was kind of prelude to that. It's gonna be, it's actually gonna be straight axis, X horizontal, Y vertical. 
because uh, the, despite all these appearances, the plumb bar is actually accelerating horizontally. <laughs> the circle is horizontal, so it's centripetal, it's going uh, horizontal to the left. So, okay, that's step number two, uh, define the coordinate axis. Step number three, we have to de uh, decompose the forces. I actually did it halfway. I drew this um, X component already, so let me finish by drawing the Y component. And when you actually draw the components of force, that naturally gives this uh, triangle that you should be considering. Then what you have to be careful about is where this angle theta is. It's the same angle as this angle here. So what you have to remember, realize is that your Tx is T sine theta because it's the side opposite to the angle theta and Ty is equal to T cosine theta. I, I like to do this as part of step number three. It makes my step number four easier because step number four is now finally writing down Newton's second law equations. And uh, once you are done through steps number uh, one through three thoroughly, then step number four is as simple as taking the information in the free body diagram and kind of copying it into equation. So the two equations I'm writing down are one for x direction and one for y direction. And I'm writing down the net force in the x direction is equal to, uh, oh, only one force, the x component of the tension force is equal to mass times acceleration. And I already recognized it as centripetal acceleration. So let me just write down mv squared over r. That's the formula for centripetal force. Uh, the forces in the y component is net force along the y direction is, um, I have two forces in the y direction, the y component of tension force and the, um, and the gravitational force. Um, so the y component of tension force, T cosine theta, uh, that's the y component, that's why I did that before, minus mg. And it's not accelerating in the vertical direction, it's only accelerating horizontally to the left. So that's equal to zero. All right, so this is where I now stop. I'm done with all the standard strategy steps. So, and now I'm taking stock of all the unknowns um, and, uh, and, and taking stock of uh, all the known information, which are equations, and see where I stand. So the unknowns first. Um, tension, I don't know tension, so that's one unknown. Angle, that's the unknown that I'm being asked, asked for, so I don't know it, I need to find it. And mass, even though it's not unknown, I'm going to kind of assume that it's gonna cancel out. So I hope it cancels out. If it doesn't, we are in trouble. <laughs> so two unknowns so far. And I think that's it. We are given V. I'll have to change, convert to units, but we are given V and uh, we are given radius. So I think we have two equations, uh, two unknowns. Uh, sorry, I keep saying two. Uh, I have two unknowns and one, two equations. So I think uh, we are just ready to solve it. I guess the strategy here is uh, I'm going to try to get rid of tension. Um, and um, there are different ways to do it. And really the way I recommend for everyone is substitution. I mean, you can do this more quickly using a linear combination or whatever. But um, the nice thing about substitution is it always works. Uh, even though it could be a bit more tedious sometimes, it always works. That's kind of um, worth something. And, um, and, and uh, yeah, so, so I, it's kind of in the spirit of a standard strategy that here's this one approach that works a lot of the time. So I'm just going to continue to use that. And recognizing that what I need in the end is the angle, I'm going to be careful to not solve for it initially. Instead, I'm going to solve for tension first and use what I solved for to eliminate tension from my system of equations and hope whatever remains is something I can solve for angle. 
So I think I'm actually going to take the equation two and solve that for tension. So move mg over, solving it for tension, I get tension is equal to mg divided by cosine theta. That's something I can plug into equation one. So let me call this two prime. So from equation one and two prime, what I get is mg divided by cosine theta times sine theta minus, uh, wait, no minus, no, that's the whole left hand side. So that's equal to m v squared over r. And as I was hoping, mass was canceled. Great. And um, so to solve for uh, angle theta, I think one thing that will be useful is to combine the sine over cosine into a single trigonometric function, tangent theta. So when I do that, what I get is g tangent theta is equal to v squared over r. So, oh, so I can so just solve for tangent theta. And then knowing that theta is an acute angle, I can do arc tangent to get the angle. So doing that all just in my head, what you end up with is uh, theta is equal to arc tangent of v squared over rg. And it's always worth checking the units. Uh, v squared is a meter squared per second squared and r is a meter and g is a meter per second squared. So all the units cancel out to give me a unitless quantity and that's good because tangent of an angle is unitless. All right, uh, so I think I'm ready to plug in the numbers and um, I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut. Um, I don't want to take time to do the unit conversions. I'm just gonna use all from alpha. <laughs> it's, um, by the way, one thing I can kind of give you as a way of guarantee is uh, in your exams, you are almost never going to have to do unit conversion. Uh, it's a kind of a, my kind of a thing. I, I don't like unit conversion questions, um, especially on exams in the sense that it makes you, it, it's the kind of thing by the time you get to physics 4A, you know how to do it. It just takes time. And um, that time it takes, it doesn't teach you anything. So uh, 22.5, uh, yeah, I think that's enough uh, significant figures. Okay, um, so. 22.5 meters per second is the speed given. Uh, so I think I have all the numbers to plug in. So uh, V squared is 22.5 squared divided by um, radius 280 meters times G. And this one, um, because we haven't fixed the rounding issue yet, we have to be um, <laughs> careful about using 9.8, not 10. Okay, so that's uh, the quantity. And let me just press equal. So it gives me the ratio. And then I'm going to take the arc tangent of that. Uh, let me put myself in degree mode, or I was in degree mode. So that um, the answer it's gonna give me when I do arc tangent is going to be the one in degrees. So 10.45 degrees. And it says round the answer to one decimal place. So the answer should be 10.5, 10.5. And uh, once again, this is what I mean by the rounding issue not having been fixed yet in that. Um, so this is like within a 2% tolerance. And once it's fixed, then like answers that's as far off as that will be considered correct. But right now, I think you are allowed to be off by one digit but that's the farthest we are allowed to be off by. For now, I, we need to fix that. I don't, yeah. 